Hey everybody, Dirk here. Welcome once again to the Dungeon Laboratory. <laughs> I'm just uh, messing about here. <clears throat> Built uh, This is a buffered cold pits crystal oscillator. I kind of wanted to build this for, for a while now, and I, I got around to building it yesterday because I had to wait for another project um, to finish curing. A... Yeah, it's pretty much dry now, so I can play with that. But I, I went ahead and built this. It, it, was, it went together really, really quick. Uh, just a handful of components. There's a little circuit diagram right there. Um, yeah, it's nothing fancy. It uses a, the 2N2222, but I'm pretty sure you can use uh, other generic um, uh, you know, capacitors, uh, transistors, DC547, um, the 2N3904, I forget what it is. It's like the American version. Well, I mean, this is another American version here. Is that they have a... Um, these um these two N two 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 twos or yeah uh, A that is the little can ones these have a really high bandwidth so uh, they're really good for for testing crystals so I have some various crystals here um, I wanted to test out a couple of crystals uh, crystals because I wanted to use them for a future project these uh four four meg uh, crystals and uh, yeah I had a couple of things here and um, that was pretty good. So basically the back end here is, is the cold pits oscillator and then the, the front portion is, is just a buffering stage. And I'm, I'm assuming that's there to um, to make this more of like a line output so you can you can put your, your uh, test equipment on there uh, to get a get a good reading. It does work. It's a, it, it works great in the oscilloscope. I'm going to turn that. Intensity. down just a little bit. There you go. Still seems bright in the camera, but I, I turned that down quite a bit, actually. There we go. Turn that down just a little bit more. Um, yeah, this works uh, really, really good. But um, I don't have I haven't tested it on like a normal frequency counter. I'm just using the frequency counter that's built into this um, this uh, multimeter. I, I quite like this multimeter. It's uh, pretty good. Um, yeah. So uh, if you have it on the oscilloscope. And then you have another test, uh, some more test gear on here. I don't know if it, if it would do the same thing with the frequ uh, frequency counter. Um, that it seems to, uh, when I have this on here, it seems to distort. Um, the waveform doesn't look very, very good on here, but trust me, it is. Uh, the waveforms are, are very nice. These are, you know, as long as the crystal's good, they're going to have a stable sine wave output. So it should sound or look very well. So uh, I'll just turn it on. That's damn. That's damn near dead nuts on there because it is a 4.0 megahertz crystal, so 3.9. You know, um, I don't know how accurate the the multimeter is here. I have to use another test a piece of test gear. Don't know if I can. I can't see shit. I'll turn up the illumination just a little bit, and there's our sine wave. Now you can kind of see it there. A little distorted because of the uh, multimeter on there. Yeah, my uh, my scope needs a little uh, TLC. See, if I go too high up there, but yeah, you get the gist of it. So, you know, we can take that out. And uh, let's do uh, we'll do this one. It's like a 14, 14.32, and it says 14.31818, you know, pretty damn ballpark on there. And as you can see, the frequency is a lot higher now, so I have to, oops, let's see if we can get that. And as you can see, the waveform is really terrible, but if I was to take this off of here, as you can see, it's a lot nicer now. That's the highest mine thing goes up, and I don't know why, but it seems to have a. Uh... Now there's there's something something fishy going on in my uh, oscilloscope. I need some uh, I need some repair work here. It could be a capacitor. I'm not quite sure what that is. But yeah, that works uh, works really well. 
that was pretty cool. I mean, you can use crystals for various projects, you know. Um, obviously, you know, for, for clocks and uh, whatnot. I mean, I'm pretty, you can probably make uh, some type of interesting, um, uh, you know, synthesizer. But obviously, with these types of frequencies, I don't think you'd be able to hear much of anything because they're so high up there. Um, but you can get, you know, you can get smaller crystals, obviously. Um, you can, there's even additional circuitry that I, I've seen online where you can um, break down the frequency, you know, the frequency output from your crystal into different uh, sections. You can have different um, frequency outputs, um, you know, using like a divider um, IC of, of some kind, of CMOS. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I really like this. This is pretty fun. Um, it's a, you know, it's like a little beginner's project if you want to build on like the copper clad um, board here. Very simple, really fun. I like this, and uh, works pretty cool. And I, I don't really use these um, these transistors that much. Uh, I use them for one radio project, and that's about it. So it's kind of nice to use these guys again. It's it's pretty simple. It works really good. Twelve volts, no problem. So yeah, I just figured I'd share that with you guys. You know, <laughs> I know I've been going kind of crazy with the Tesla coils, and uh, I don't know. I just I I just I kind of want to have some nice uh, Tesla coil circuits that, you know, I can just pull out whenever I want and, you know, turn them on and they work every time. So that's kind of why I've been obsessing over over that for, you know, the last uh, few weeks. I just want uh, a nice Tesla coil circuit. Well, circuits. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.